Colorado is one of the first states to have authorized the medical use of cannabis in the U.S. Here, there are a lot of specialized pharmacies, all displaying the famous five-branch leaf. How's it going? Hi, how are you? Doing pretty well. Good, good. I'm just coming in to pick up some Mary's patches today. All right, you guys have your medical card on you? All right, looks like we're all good. Okay. Come on back, guys. There we go. The clientele doesn't coincide with the image you probably have of regular drug users. Megan comes here to buy medicine to treat her daughter. All right, going to go with the CBD THC patch. Mm -hmm. Addie suffers from severe epilepsy that resisted every classic treatment. Her seizures, up to several hundred per day, prevented her from growing up normally and would probably have killed her. Got to the point where we were considering cannabis for our child. Um, again, she was sleeping 22 hours a day. Our pediatrician was preparing us for her to die. We were receiving palliative care through Mass General Hospital um, for children. So at that point, we thought she was going to die. Um, so I'm not sure what would happen had we not been able to get access to cannabis. We know clearly that this has significantly changed her quality of life. Whether it has also extended her life, time will tell. Um, but we're very, very fortunate that this was an option for us. Three years later, Addie has some mental retardation. But the seizures have almost disappeared. She can play with her brother. And above all, this year she can go to school. So when we started her on cannabis, we gave her a very, very small dose of a high CBD oil. And within five minutes of that first dose, she smiled. And she hadn't smiled in probably three or four months prior to that because she was so medicated from the other drugs. Um, we did not see seizure control for another couple of months. But over time, it did get better and better. Um, and now her quality of life is heads and shoulders above where it was. Oh, it's OK, sweet girl. Oh, it's breezy. Twice a day, Addie's treatment consists of swallowing a few drops of an oil prepared from cannabis flowers. Hi. We're going to do some oil ready. But of course, these drops have no euphoric or psychotropic effects. Good girl, there. All done. All done. Good girl. The doctors prescribed a special variety of cannabis for children that is grown in Colorado greenhouses. Today, thousands of patients, whatever their age, are treated with cannabis. And there are so many ways to consume it that, to keep informed, patients' families have founded an association. Realm of Caring, a major caregiver, is known throughout the country. Thank you for calling the Realm of Caring Foundation. This is Lynette. How can I help you? If we're talking about schizophrenia, Charlotte's Web, yes, ma'am, you could see results. But what you need to be aware of is that it has a little bit of THC. So with time, you might get a negative reaction. So this right here is the Realm of Caring Care Team. It consists of seven individuals who speak four different languages. And what we do is about 7,000 interactions a month. Uh, we make sure that these individuals, our care team, are absolutely up to date and current on any research, science, data that's available for medical cannabis. If you can get it as close to the source of the cancer, um, that's always best. We do promote medical cannabis. Uh, it's, we have a lot of believers here in medical cannabis. Uh, scientifically and research-wise, it's really starting to pick up, and there's a lot of information out there now. And we hope to be able to provide that information in a concise manner. The keen interest in the medical use of cannabis is not restricted to Colorado. Even though it remains illegal on the federal level, in 2016, more than half of the states in the U.S. had already legalized its medical use. Dozens of countries worldwide have done the same, such as Canada, Israel, or Germany, which has recently changed its legislation. But some countries refuse, like Poland, Greece, and especially France. Hello. 
Here, no reevaluation for cannabis, not even medical. According to the National Academy of Medicine, this plant and its contents have no place in pharmacies. For a long time, our Academy of Medicine has considered the problem of cannabis in general and of its therapeutic values in particular. After assembling and analyzing all the information derived from the numerous reports and the results of various trials, we've reached one simple conclusion. Cannabis is a real drug, but not a real medicine. Over a length of time, its use leads to addiction, to dependence, the need to have it on a regular basis. The result is cognitive disruption, learning disruption and memory disruption. To better understand the consequences of using cannabis, a study was done by analyzing the brain scans of heavy smokers. And the results obtained by Professor Martineau confirmed that regular use of cannabis impacts the brain. Just cross your hands. That's good. So in the brain of a person who has regularly used cannabis, that is, on a daily basis, we can observe modifications in the structure of the brain, but above all in its functioning. For example, we've seen that there is a 20% decrease of a substance that regulates the transmission between the neurons. These modifications in the brain could explain memory loss, problems with concentration, and impulsive behavior observed in adults who are heavy smokers. But the main worry of scientists and doctors concerns the consumption of cannabis during adolescence. In adolescence, the brain is in a major stage of development and is maturing rapidly. Also developing is the quality of the white material, which are fibers that link the different parts of the brain together. So there is a very big risk to brain development, although we still don't know what the consequences may be. Certain doctors are worried about the consequences of using a drug, even for medical purposes. But for Professor Benyamina, who participated in these impact studies, the two aspects of its use must remain separate. Obviously, cannabis use for adolescents poses certain risks. It could cause problems linked with learning, cognition and concentration, and also a risk, small but real, of serious illnesses like schizophrenia. We're not referring to medical cannabis here, but about cannabis sold on the street, whose provenance and contents remains unknown. Like all the products, all molecules put on the market, medical cannabis undergoes rigorous testing before being released to the public. These are two different things and they should not be confused. The use of medical cannabis is hardly a new idea. Different traditional medicines recognized its virtues a very long time ago. Cannabis flower heads with their pungent taste are prescribed against the five fatigues and the seven afflictions. And they are salutary for the five viscera. Prolonged usage puts one in touch with the spirits and lightens the body. The medical use of cannabis in traditional Chinese medicine goes back to about the first century AD. And we have written fragments with drawings of this plant describing its somatic and psychic powers. In the past, cannabis was usually chewed or taken as a tea. It was often smoked, but not always for its therapeutic effects. In antiquity, cannabis was mentioned in the pharmacopoeias of India, the Middle East, and even Greece. In France, cannabis first arrived in the luggage of botanists returning from scientific expeditions. And a French psychiatrist made it famous, Jacques-Joseph Moreau de Tours.
This gentleman, who was a young psychiatrist, had taken cannabis and he was known for frequenting the upper echelons of society, those who were the influential and prominent people of that era, and he began to turn them onto cannabis. These were doctors, writers, philosophers, powerful people. So at that time, cannabis was considered in an extremely positive light. It could do no wrong. At that time, for relief of pain, there was only opium. Quite effective, however, the patients became addicted to it. So cannabis became an analgesic substitute for opium. Queen Victoria's doctor prescribed cannabis to relieve the suffering and pain of her legendary painful menstruation. But with the arrival of aspirin, more effective, easier to produce, cannabis could no longer compete. Old-fashioned in the eyes of doctors, it became obsolete. The final blow came in the U.S. in the 30s. When prohibition ended, the head of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics started a war against drugs. Cannabis, heroin, and cocaine were all put in the same category. The Treasury Department intends to pursue a relentless warfare against the despicable dope peddling vulture who preys on the weakness of his fellow man. Oh! Cannabis made the headlines almost every day. Sex scandals, crimes of passion, it was blamed for everything. Propaganda films produced by the Federal Bureau of Narcotics were distributed in movie theaters. In them, cannabis is responsible for perverting the young and driving them to lust, crime, and suicide. Within a few years, cannabis became public enemy number one. It was banned from the pharmacopoeia. In 1961, it joined opium and coca on the UN list of the most dangerous drugs. <laughs> 